hello. I was just practicing my whistling here. You know, I have a friend who can whistle really loud. Oh, much louder than me. He uses his fingers. He puts them in his mouth and blows. That's not it. Ah! Oh, I'm going to do that again. Excuse me. Oh. Hello? No, 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 no. No, no, everything's all right. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> that was my friend Rodney. Can you imagine? He thought that my whistle was a special emergency signal. <laughs> you know, Theodore was wondering about his whistle, too, just the other day. Let me tell you about it. Theodore and Hank were bringing a cargo ship named Catherine into the big harbor. Theodore was the tug in charge. That meant he was up in front, leading the way and giving the orders. Theodore always felt important when he was the tug in charge. Theodore gave two stern blasts of his whistle to warn Hank he was about to start turning. Why, that is the cutest little whistle, said Catherine. My whistle isn't cute or little, said Theodore. My whistle is, is, uh, fresh, suggested Hank. It was the only word he could think of just then. Well, by the time they reached the dock, Theodore had a big frown. After all, he was an important tug in charge. And he didn't think an important tug in charge should have a cute little whistle. After he had finished moving Catherine, Theodore couldn't stop thinking about his whistle. That was Emily's whistle. Now, to Theodore, Emily's whistle always sounded confident. It seemed to say, I'll handle this. Theodore cleared his smokestack and blew his best whistle. But to Theodore, his whistle said, ordinary. My whistle isn't good enough, he thought. Theodore wanted his own special whistle. He decided to make his whistle sound just like Emily's. Theodore blew and blew his whistle, trying to make it sound confident like Emily's. What do you think? He said. Well, Emily wondered why Theodore was making that strange sound. I think you should go to the repair yards, she said. There may be something stuck in your smokestack. Not long after, Theodore spied Fodak passing by on his harbor safety patrol. Fodak whistled to let everyone know he was on the job. To Theodore, Fodak's whistle sounded very serious. It said, I'm doing important things. Theodore decided that maybe his whistle should sound like Fodux. Theodore blew and blew, trying to make his whistle sound serious and important. Bat! cried Fodux. It sounds like there's a giant bat in the harbor. I better warn everyone. Did he say my whistle sounded like a bat? frowned Theodore. Hank was just getting ready to pull Bobby Barge when Theodore came floating along. Hank let out a loud whistle as he got underway. Now to Theodore, Hank's whistle sounded larger than life. I'm ready for anything, it seemed to say. And Theodore decided that maybe his whistle should sound more like Hank's. Hank, wait a minute, he called. Theodore blew, and he blew his whistle, trying to make it sound larger than life. Well, asked Theodore, after he had finished whistling for Hank. What do you think of my new whistle? Is it bigger or, or just better? Hank looked blank. But then, seeing how discouraged Theodore looked, he said, It's bigger and better. It's bitter. Uh, no, it's butter. It, it's, uh, it sounds fresh. Theodore continued along his way home when he saw George moving Owen the oil rig. Well, George gave a bumper-rattling blast with his whistle. To Theodore, George's whistle sounded big and brash and bold. It announced to all the world, make way for me. Hmm. George has the very best whistle of all, thought Theodore. So Theodore decided to make his whistle sound just like George's. Theodore took his windiest breath, made his best whistling face, puckered his lips, and let out all his air with a great whoosh. The big harbor shook with a mighty sound of... Nothing. Not a sound. Not a peep. Not even a little bird's tweet. Theodore had worn out his whistle. That afternoon, the tugboats were gathered at the great ocean dock. The dispatcher was about to make a surprise announcement. Tugboats, the dispatcher began. This afternoon, a very special guest is arriving in our harbor. The great ocean liner, 
the Queen Stephanie. The tugs were thrilled to hear this. The Queen Stephanie was the grandest ocean liner in the world. She visited the harbor every now and then. And when she did, it was always a special event. Everyone ship shape? Asked the dispatcher. The tugs all whistled. Yes, sir. One by one. All except Theodore. Theodore, said the dispatcher. All ship shape? I, uh, I can't whistle. Theodore said in a voice the dispatcher could hardly hear. Well, the dispatcher said nothing for the longest moment. And then he turned so that only Theodore could hear. Theodore, tugs must have whistles if they want to walk. No, I'm sorry, but I can't send you out with the other tugs to bring in the Queen Stephanie today. Well, Theodore knew the dispatcher was right, but it didn't make it any easier. He wanted to help bring in the Queen more than anything. The other tugboats set off to meet the Queen Stephanie. Soon a mighty horn was heard, echoing across the water. Theodore could see all the other tugs greeting the Queen without him. It all started because I didn't like my whistle, Theodore thought sadly. And now I don't have any whistle at all. The sun had almost set by the time the tugs finished bringing in the Queen Stephanie. They returned to the great ocean dock, tired but excited, talking loudly about the Queen. She really is the nicest ship, said Emily. She's so kind. Very modern, said Frodo. Very big, trumpeted George. Very fresh, exclaimed Hank. That was the only word he could think of, and it sounded great. Hearing how wonderful it all was just made Theodore feel even worse about missing his chance to bring in the great ship. Emily floated quietly over to Theodore. Queen Stephanie was asking about you, she said. She was, said Theodore. What did she want? What did she say? What did you tell her? Oh, tell me, Emily. She asked me where you were, said Emily. She did, said Theodore. Yes, continued Emily. I think you should go over and say hello. Do you think it's okay, said Theodore. Sure, replied Emily. Even though you can't work without your whistle, you can still visit. A little later, Theodore set off to see the Queen Stephanie. It was dark by now. The harbor lights were winking all around him. Why was the queen asking about me? Theodore wondered. The closer Theodore got to the queen, Stephanie, the louder his heart seemed to pound. He was sure the whole harbor could hear it. And then he saw her. Theodore couldn't help but <gasps> gasp out loud. What a sight she was. Her lights reflected in the water, and she swayed slightly in the nighttime tide so that she seemed to be suspended in the sky itself. To Theodore, oh, she looked like a great floating palace. Theodore, said the queen, surprised. I'm very glad to see you. I missed you today. When Theodore heard this, he felt sad. I'm sorry, I couldn't help bring you in, he said. But, well, you see, I wore out my whistle. Wore out your whistle, said the queen. Oh, that really is too bad. Your whistle is so bright and cheerful, just like you are. It is, said Theodore. I mean, I am. Theodore frowned a little. I didn't think you even noticed my whistle. Oh, I most certainly do, said the queen. Even when I can't see tugboats buttoned on way below me, I can always hear their whistles and tell exactly who they are by their sound. Oh, every tugboat has their own special whistle. Even me? said Theodore. Oh, I should say so, said the queen brightly. Your whistle is the most special thing about you. My whistle, said Theodore. Of course, replied the queen. Your whistle always makes me smile. Well, Theodore was silent. He was thinking about everything the queen was saying. And somehow, just hearing her words made him feel much better about his whistle. I'm sure you'll get your whistle back soon, said the queen. It probably, it just needs a little rest. Oh, and so do I, she yawned. It's getting late. Good night, Theodore. Good night, said Theodore. Theodore headed home, taking his time. It had seemed like a magical night, and he didn't want it to end just yet. The Queen Stephanie really was the nicest ship. It seemed she always knew just the right thing to say. Had she really said that his whistle was bright 
and cheerful and that it made her smile? I guess my whistle is special, Theodore thought. The night was clear and starry, and there was a gentle tang of salt sea air in the breeze, and Theodore felt happy. Then softly, so softly, he took a breath and let out a small, sweet, wonderful whistle. His good old Theodore whistle. And he just had to smile. I can always hear the tugboat's whistles from up here in my office. And you know something? Theodore's whistle always makes me smile, too. Well, all the tug's whistles do. Now, I was working on my own whistle, wasn't I? <whistles> eh, well, it's loud, but, well, I like my own whistle just the way it is. Thank you very much. <whistles> See, I mean, it may not be as loud as some other whistles, but it sounds like it belongs to yours truly, the harbor master. And that's good enough for me. Well, thanks for visiting us here in the big harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye, you know. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore.